Let's do it. From the trilogy Wire Monkey, a poem called Home, 2005. Has anyone at home hit you or tried to injure you in any way? Oh, for fuck's sake, watch your mouth. Oh, for double fuck's sake, I don't say that out loud. <laughs> the BVO cop sighs like he's got heartburn and then shuffles his standard hospital forms he's got to fill out when two relatives show up at the ER in a questionable state. I know I'm supposed to answer the questions quickly and demurely, but all I can think of at the moment is, that cop must have looked really hot in 1977. <laughs> Besides, I don't even think the hospital has a form for our family. Because unless you got your head up your ass with your eyes closed, it's pretty obviously what is what. Of the two old ladies in the middle of the busiest, poorest, noisiest ER in the whole world, the cute 88-year-old is pristine and dapper in her men's shirt and slacks she insisted putting on before getting into the ambulance, and her 50-year-old daughter in sloppy jeans and a ratty t-shirt is covered from head to toe in blood. Okay, maybe not head to toe, but head to neck. <laughs> and here in the middle of the busiest, poorest, noisiest, and might I add, shittiest ER in the whole world, when you got 10 billion open wounds and disgusting everything's all over the place. Anytime anybody looks at me, they get that startled look, you know, like they do that look away and then try to look back, but not with, like they're looking. And then, like, you know, when you accidentally bump into Quasimodo in the bathroom and you're trying to be polite? <laughs> and so tell me, Mr. Hunkarama Law Enforcement, who I'd write lots of bad poems about in 1977. What do you think? <laughs> Poor cop. 30 years on the force, probably about to retire to Florida with his second wife. And it does that sigh thing again, because it used to be all right to smack your kid around, and now it's therapists and Oprah and, you know, more paperwork than an insurance claim. My face feels like it's getting bigger and bigger, and I can't breathe because my cheeks have buried my nose. So I'm breathing through my mouth, but every single time I do my lips scream in pain. Uh, okay, does your partner ever hit kick? She's not my partner, she's my mother. <laughs> <laughs> he shuffles the forms to a new page. Okay, does your mother hit you a lot, or does she do other things? Not for triple fuck's sake. You know, I roll my eyes at this question because it's obviously for someone much younger than me, like an eight-year-old, but my cheeks have moved on from my nose and I can't quite open my eyes, let alone roll them. Also, I think I have a concussion because when he called the cellist, your mother, my head reverberated. We do that long look at each other. Well, as much as I can from inside a face the size of a watermelon. Woof. Does she do other things? Yes. Yes, she does. And she always has, and so what? We all did. You know, okay, like a bunch of years ago, the cellist almost pushed me into traffic at Spring and Broadway because I broke up with my girlfriend who she had a crush on and started dating Mr. Discount Love, who she refused to accept because of the penis thing. You know, it didn't hurt me as much as I hurt her describing in detail how to do a really good glow job. <laughs> okay, how about the time she was about to fall into the tracks at the IND Delancey stop because she couldn't see the edge of the platform because she didn't tell anyone she had cataracts and I grabbed her and she kicked me in the shins really hard. Okay, wait a minute, maybe that wasn't on purpose. You know, she's so used to getting mugged, maybe her kicking me was just an automatic response. Okay, forget that one. Wait, does screaming count? Because I got loads of those. I mean, I can't remember a walk with the cellist ever at any point where she didn't start screaming at me. I mean, I always screamed back. Okay, oh man, the last time was when I shoved her into a taxi because she had just fainted but told me she would kill me if I took her to the hospital. That poor cab driver, I mean, wherever he was from, it was definitely worse than here, and you know he's far away from his family, and people treat him like shit, and he's driving the night shift, which means, like, chances of getting killed on the job jump 100 billion percent. But at the end of the ride, he was so upset listening to her scream me and me scream back that he didn't want to take my money. And he kept looking at me with pity. I mean, I don't think I've ever been looked at with such pity. And he's the one driving the cab. I don't say any of this out loud. Mr. Hunky Hunk does that sigh thing again, looks at me like a fuck's sake. I just gotta fill out the forms and then I can go retire. He puts his papers down, looks me straight in the face, and then points his little pointy finger at me. Okay, you listen to me. I'm gonna ask you this, and you're gonna answer, understand? 
How often do you hit your mother? Oh, isn't that question up there with have you stopped beating your wife? Yes or no? Okay, technically, this could possibly be a case of elder abuse, but it's not. I just don't do well with roaches. That's all this is about, roaches. And besides, I'm the injured party here for a drupal fuck's sake. I mean, I look like the elephant man. All the cellist got is an erratic heartbeat, which is why she couldn't get up from the floor when I pushed her off me, which is nothing compared to the urinary tract infection they're testing her for because she told them it's my fault it hurts when she pees. They can't pin the pee thing on me. <laughs> the heart thing, yeah, maybe. Okay. Maybe I punched her to get her off me. But she punched me first in the face, which is why I can't breathe or see right now. Hello? 80 years of playing the cello. Do you know how strong her hands are? Okay, maybe she wasn't aiming for the face, but she's half blind, so who the hell know what she was aiming for? And once again, I don't say any of this out loud. <laughs> the cop gets up walks away with his paperwork and starts punching numbers in a phone. You know, when a cop, you would fuck in a heartbeat in 1977, stops filling out a standard form and starts punching a phone? That can't be good. <laughs> this plastic surgeon skips over, and when I say skip, I mean skips. When I'm finished with you, you're gonna look just as beautiful tomorrow as you did yesterday. And then he skips up to get his sewing kit. Okay, one, I think he's way too excited about sewing your faces, and two, uh, wasn't that pretty yesterday? And I'm not expecting much tomorrow. And just as I'm deciding whether to breathe out of my mouth or my buried nostrils, out of the crazy ass, noisiest, shittiest ER in the whole world, I hear, I'm not getting in that thing. I'm not. Get your goddamn hands off of me. <laughs> uh, the dolce tones of my 88-year-old mother, the cellist, in all her glory clinging to the arm of a couch while kicking an orderly who is only trying to get her to sit in a wheelchair. <laughs> the orderly is so completely freaked out. It takes me about 20 minutes to assure her, no, he didn't do anything wrong. She just doesn't agree with reality that she's old. They got a stash her somewhere, so a nurse who's six feet tall and has the best falsies, tits and eyelashes, sets up a stall along the wall between the janitor sink and the broom closet with ivy poles holding up a sheet. That's because the ER is packed. Me and a poor medical intern looks terrified, but has been instructed to keep tabs on the cellist pulse. They're all stuffed into the stall. One of the nurses tries to shove the gurney deeper into the janitor sink. Full moon, she mutters as she runs off. <laughs> yeah, we've been in this ER enough times to know how to settle down for the long wait. The cellist is drifting into some music she can no longer play. Judging from her fingering on the IV pole and her humming, it sounds like the Schumann fantasy stuck. Yeah, that should keep her busy for a while. <laughs> the medical intern looks even more terrified. Obviously, no one made her take cello lessons. I pop onto the cellist's gurney and try to get everything to stop hurting. I hate this hospital. We came here for every illness, like the time I slammed the other daughter's head into the sofa because she kicked me and then she got meningitis. Or the time the old man couldn't stop throwing up because his dead dad kept visiting him. Or the time some kid doctor gave me some medicine that only adult white men are supposed to take, but I was only nine and he was making his first house call, and then the medicine tried to kill me, and somehow, the cellist and the old men knew enough not to wait for the Avenue D bus, but to call 911. And I was fine watching my body jerk all over the place when my heart began to stop, but man, when I saw a bunch of nurses like Moses at the Red Sea part, the cellist and the old man who were lunging at each other's throats over my freaking out body, I thought, geez, maybe I should become a nurse, because no one ever got my parents to stop hitting each other like that. No, really. They should just engrave over the ER entrance our family crest of a pissed off rat lunging at something. <laughs> a nurse runs by calling over her shoulder something about a tranquilizer for the screaming homeless guy the cops just brought in. And the homeless guy definitely needs one. He's screaming, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, louder, louder, louder. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Softer, softer, softer. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. I don't know if the drugs hit him or they just moved him off the floor. Silence. And then boom, all 
I hear is this yelling, and I peek out, and I see this father running down the aisle screaming in Spanish, my kid's having a seizure, can I get a doctor here? And I know that's what he's screaming because his son is running right behind him screaming it in English. I look over at the nurse's station, and there's a little girl on the counter, and she's definitely having a seizure. And the nurses are screaming back in Spanglish, Tranquilo, tranquilo, el doctor viene. He's vienning. <laughs> I failed Spanish twice. I, even I know that's not how you conjugate that verb. Finally, when the orderly runs over, and he must have been better Spanish because the father is nodding, and the nurse is helping little girl. I swear, if that doctor moves any slower, it's going to be tomorrow. Our stall suddenly feels like a peaceful spa if you ignore the terrified intern, the heart and wires hooked up to the cellist in my bloody clothes. Out of nowhere, my nose starts working because I suddenly smell that hospital smell that lies to you, telling you everything is clean and sterile. But really, all you are smelling are horrible diseases that put on deodorant. <laughs> Thank you, Phil.